in this video we will talk about charts. Let us look at here, uh, is this a right way to represent the information? This is a pie chart, this is a stacked bar chart, it is good, it has a lot of information. Just take a moment and think why this is not the right way to represent. The reason is uh, there are too much information and although there are each and every colors, but still it is too much information for someone to observe it. Um, I know the data might be of really compli complicated data, we are representing a nice pie chart, still we are making more complicated for students to understand or the end users to understand. Uh, maybe how do you compare these two colors? So, what this color means, we have to look at it. So, there are a lot of um, complication in this particular type of representations. Similarly, in this particular charts, uh, I want to see how this particular one variable um, is changing over the time and it is not easy for me to make the inference from the data. So, what type of charts to use and what are the types are there? So, there are many more types of charts or plots or graphical representations, basics ones like bar chart, stack bar chart, pie chart, histogram, box plot, scatter plot and line charts. And uh, when we can use these charts and when we cannot use the charts. So, we will go into each of these uh, types of charts in detail. First, we will start with bar charts. Bar chart is nothing but a uh, pictorial representation of consisting of rectangles, represent a variable values or different contexts like a time, place, etc. And it is most frequently used and it is very easy to comprehend, right? So, we use bar chart, we saw that everywhere. So, it is kind of this, um, like uh, I was talking about the average marks over several years, uh, 2015, 2016, 2017, if you have a particular course. Uh, the particular course is average mark over say last 6 years, you can draw this graph chart. So, this bar chart tells you that a, um, the student's performance in 2015 and 2019, 20 is comparable, but 2016 batch did really good. You might have uh, did some new teaching uh, strategy, uh, the students are exceptionally good or something happened there. Uh, you might know what is uh, what has happened there, that will be diagnostic context. But by just describing this data in a bar chart, you get some uh, indication that something good here. And here these two batches are consistently did good uh, compared to the other three uh, batches like 2015, 19 and 20. So, might be something happening in this two area, something is reducing there. So, this kind of simple representation using rectangles is represented as a bar charts. Uh, it gives inference that uh, comparing one year data to other year data and different times. Also, um, this is most frequently used and uh, easy to understand. So, you know bar charts, uh, just give an ex example also. Uh, now, consider um, what, when to use this bar charts and when not to use this bar charts. At least list down two points for when to use and list down two points for when not to use bar charts. Um, after you writing down your answer, uh, resume to continue. So, when to use bar charts, um, like it is uh, while tracking the variable, uh, uh, development of variable from uh, say um, uh, year 1 to year 2 to year 3, you can use it. Uh, for example, here a uh, child's, uh, uh, child's growth in um, uh, every year, every exams or the child's growth in every month, something like that. And uh, while comparing two quantities over time, uh, for example, you want to compare uh, absent rate of boys and girls uh, in a different grades, you can these kind of charts. So, here um, the boys data is like um, in, a, in a light gray color and black color is the girls data. So, you can compare this data. So, you can say consistently uh, the absent rate has been uh, across grades, uh, it is higher uh, for uh, boys. And, uh, and uh, class 9 students absent rate is um, uh, less compared to the class 12 students. So, you can infer more information from this graph. So, to compare and also to show the uh, trend, also to compare the data several years, the bar charts can be used. When not to use bar charts? When you are using more than two variables or if you want to compare a student's performance in seven courses of uh, in average over years. So, when you use more than two variables, um, better not to use the bar charts. Also, when you wish to depict the contribution made by each individual uh, towards total quantity, bar chart is not uh, useful information. 
and uh, bar chart will not show all the statistical information of the data you provided. For example, it says the average. Uh, who got the minimum score in that particular year? Who got the maximum score? Can we get the data from the bar chart? No. So, bar chart is not uh, good to represent the contribution by each individual also to represent the uh, statistical uh, features of the data. Let us move on to pie charts. Pie charts is a circular chart divided into slices. Um, so the larger the slice, uh, the more contribution it has made to the total quantity. Here is an example pie chart. Let us consider this is the distribution of emotions in a online session. Let us consider the A is uh, students engagement and this is students uh, delight and less um, frustrated, confused, bored. So, if you want to represent out of the total time in the online session, uh, say 20 percent of the time students is engaged, 32 percent they are delighted and uh, 12 percent they were frustrated and 12 percent bored, in 24 percent of time they are um, confused. So, So, data can be used to represent this kind of information. Uh, students information and uh, in uh, respect to the overall behavior of the students. So, similar to last activity, uh, please pause this video and uh, list down when to use pie chart, when not to use pie charts. So, for depicting the sections of wall uh, that is representing uh, the fraction of information compared to the whole information. Um, the pie charts can be used. So, uh, for example, uh, in the class, um, what f fraction of students uh, got which grade in the class? For example, um, who got less than uh, 10 marks? What is the fraction? Say that is a fraction of the values. And uh, who got more than uh, 50 marks? This is a fraction. So, to represent that the class distribution of marks uh, is can be used pie chart. So, the important information in pie chart is make sure the sum of all the values um, uh, equal to the total quantity, do not miss out the values and compute the pie chart. When not to use pie charts, um, uh, we saw the example that uh, last 6 years uh, score, consider the average score is represented in the pie chart. So, such a places like when you are comparing the progress over time, do not use pie charts. Okay. And also uh, similar to bar chart, if you have, if you are interested on one particular type of data, one particular user's information, one user's contribution, pie chart may not help. In this video, we saw what is bar charts and uh, what is pie charts. Um, in a subsequent videos, we will have a more detailed uh, discussion on other type of charts. And also we will talk about uh, which charts to be picked up for uh, what kind of data. Thank you.